What is going on guys and welcome back to the Sixers Digest YouTube channel. My name is Sean Bernard as always and today we are bringing out the skeletons in the closet once again. I want to discuss a little bit of a throwback here. Joel Embiid recently came on the Maxi on the Mic podcast by Tyrese Maxi, presented by iHeartMedia and talked a little bit about a ton of things. And one of the more interesting conversations that they dove into was both the relationships with Ben Simmons and kind of Ben Simmons' career outlook. So in this video, I want to break down what Joel specifically said regarding Simmons, how his stylistic play matched up with his. And I'm going to begin this by just kicking off Embiid's quote specifically, letting you hear from Embiid specifically what he said on the topic, and then kind of going from there and revisiting the whole Ben Simmons conversation. So let's kick things off, diving right into what Embiid said, and then we'll roll from here. And I've, I've always been one of, you know, those people that didn't believe that he didn't actually need a jumper. Like, Come out, like, yeah, know, yeah. like he's, he was so good, like, just freaking, he's just a monster, like, just physically, like, someone is freaking 6'11", just running up, up and down the floor faster than whatever, uh, than, I don't know, almost as fast as you. Right. Almost, you faster than me, but right, right. Was almost as fast. Think about six eleven, freaking, four years, right? freaking jumping high, just on oh my guarding God. everybody. That's, yeah, guarding like one through five, yeah. like freaking monster. But you like, know what? Strong. So like, I never believed that he actually needed the jumper. Right. I just believed that you know if he could find a way to get his free throws to you know seventy five, eighty yeah. percent, yeah. that would have changed everything. Because if you think about it. If he believed that he could make shots, what would he do? He would keep attacking, attacking, yeah. attacking, and never stopping. Right. Like, because, like, and then what would the defense have to do? He was already such, you know, such a great playmaker, you right. know, making the guy, the game easy for, you know, everybody else. Now, for starters, I think it's cool that we got to see Joel Embiid kind of speak, speak freely in that setting that, for the most part, he has kind of stuck to the script from a media standpoint over the past couple of years, not giving too much kind of juiciness to be taken elsewhere. We know the moments where he is trolling or he sends a message. He is very deliberate in kind of his calculated interactions with that. But I think this was a setting where he was able to kind of speak a little more free. And he even spoke to that over this interview with Maxi, where he talked about the media being against him at times due to the trolling and things like that. But the biggest point that I wanted to hit on here was his comment specifically about Ben Simmons. Now, to look at them transcribed here, and I did tweet this out, Embiid said, quote, I've always been one of those people that didn't believe that Ben didn't actually need a jumper. Like, he was so good. He's just a monster, like, just physically. Like, someone is freaking six foot eleven, running up and down the floor faster than whatever. So, like, I've never believed that he actually needed a jumper. I just believe that he could, if he could find a way to get his free throws to 75 to 80 percent, that would have changed everything. Because if you think about it, if he believed that he could make shots, what would he do? He would keep attacking, 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 and never stopping. And then what would the defense have to do? He was already such a great playmaker. Now, this, I think, is a tremendous point by Joel Embiid, and one that I think he's absolutely correct on, that the shooting is the thing that is constantly talked about with Ben Simmons. But that wasn't really the root of the issue. The root of the issue was his fear of shooting free throws. That when you look at these stats, and I, I want to dive into this in a second, that what happened with Ben Simmons throughout the course of his career was it was this level of aggression that continually scaled back and scaled back and scaled back. That oftentimes lost in kind of this discussion of Ben Simmons and the version of him that he currently is on a basketball floor, that we, we just don't see what he once was. That regardless of all the revisionist history and the bad blood that occurred, there was a point in time where Ben Simmons was a legitimate all-star in the NBA. A high-level player, one of the best playmakers in the league, one of the best transition players in the league, a guy that was a regular 16-10-10 guy. That was who Ben Simmons was, one of the best defenders in the league. There was a point in time where there was legitimate success. And to point to that specifically, the record with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, both on the floor, 144 and 63, that they were truly one of the most elite duos in the NBA. And that when we saw that this aggressiveness scale back, that's when all the bad habits came out. That it's one thing to play unselfish to where you're deferring to others, creating for others. It's another thing to be unwilling to score. And that's kind of the version of Ben that we saw. Now, to look at his stats specifically, and I'm going to dive into this here, you can see when he came to the league, look at these stats through these first couple of seasons. In that 2019-20 season, leading the league in steals 2.1 per game, 16.4 points, 8.0 assists, 7.8 rebounds. And the biggest point that Joel made in this, this statement here was the free throws. And I do think that is relevant to note. That look at the free throw percentage throughout his career. 56%, 60%, 62.1%, 61.3%. 
And then looking at the stats nowadays, it really is sad. Looking at the version of Ben Simmons that there currently is. Obviously, has not played a ton of basketball. The sample size is small and the minutes have been small. But 6.9 points per game, 6.5 points per game, 6.7 assists, 6.1 rebounds. Did ha- Is at 10.8 uh, rebounds this year. I'm sorry. But the bottom line is he's far from what he once was. And when you look at those free throw numbers once again, 43.9% and 25%. Now, beyond just the fact that obviously missing shots is bad for the team and you want the points to the count, I do think mentally it wore on Ben Simmons much more than anything. That if we want to look at his playoff stats specifically, and this is where things really fell apart in his relationship with the Sixers, look at those free throw numbers. On 6.1 free throw attempts in his final season with the Sixers, shooting just 34.2% at the free throw line. That is impossible to do. And frankly, from an NBA player, a guy that's played basketball his whole life, this is not an issue of his capability. There's no doubt that every single player in the NBA can shoot more than 34% at the free throw line. It was all mental with Ben, that it it wore on him, that when he saw those shots continue to miss, that we saw the the hack-a-shack technique where the Hawks were directly sending Simmons to the line. And you know what? It worked. And this is where things fell apart. That I do think you can blame this on one thing or another. You can blame it on the lack of work ethic, his off-court interests, whether it be streaming video games, hanging with Kendall Jenner, whatever it may be. There's plenty of things you can throw the blame at, but I do think that the correct option is that Simmons was good enough as a slasher, a guy that can get to the basket, a guy with crazy athleticism, and the back injury for sure is notable in this conversation as well. But when you take away that ability to that threat of getting the free throw line where defense can bail themselves out by fouling you and feeling confident that you're going to miss at least one of the two, it's a completely different ball game. And the version of Ben Simmons at the tail end of his career, it was clear that, that was happening, that he was hiding in the dunker spot on the offensive end. He was looking away shots and the. The play that everyone is going to remember in the Ben Simmons conversation really forever is that passed up dunk when Trey Young was coming across where Simmons threw it to Matisse Thibel. Thibel was fouled. Thibel ultimately hit one of two. But the bottom line is Ben passed up an open dunk because he was afraid he was going to get fouled. That is what Joel is speaking about here. And that aggressiveness is what prevented him from continuing to be in attack mode. That fear of getting to free throw line, that fear of failing is what drove Ben Simmons into the lesser version of himself that he currently is. And a couple other quotes that I did want to pull up, this being from the time frame where Ben Simmons was basically seeing his, himself out of Philadelphia following this Hawks series when Doc Rivers was asked if Ben Simmons can be a championship uh, point guard. His answer, I don't know the answer to that question right now, is a tough one. And everyone saw these quotes from Embiid. Uh, I, I will stick up for Embiid here that this was very much put as him throwing Simmons under the bus, which to some extent he was. His quote directly here was, quote, I'll be honest, I thought the turning point was when we, I don't know how to say it, but I thought the turning point was when we had an open shot and we made one free throw. That being the Ben Simmons pass to Matisse Thibel, Thibel being fouled and Thibel connecting on the one. Now, when you do listen to that full answer from Embiid in full, that he took a great amount of responsibility as well, that he went, went on to say that point, then take it through the next couple plays, said Trey Young came down and hit a three. Then when we went down, I had a turnover. I have to be better. Trey hit another three. I had another turnover. I need to be better. And he did take some responsibility for it. So while that snippet, that quick clip was what went crazy and uh, and B did take a lot of heat for it, something he probably shouldn't have said regardless, but I do think that it looks worse than what the actual context of the conversation was, and I will stick up for Embiid there. But back to the initial conversation with Simmons, is think about some other players across the NBA that have these issues. Think of Giannis Antetokounmpo. For starters, Giannis and Ben Simmons are the same exact height, and that's insane to think about based on how they play. So now some of that stylistic, Giannis is obviously much more of a physical freak. He's much stronger, has much more muscle to him than Ben does. And the way that Ben has always played is much more smooth than Giannis is. That Giannis is much more of a power force. Simmons much more of a, a guy with some smoothness, some athleticism, built on quickness, things like that. But Giannis is a guy that will attack the basket. He will airball both free throws. And you know what? He's coming back the next possession, and he's doing the same exact thing. That it does not prevent him from shifting. He has that short-term memory. He's able to look past things. He does not let it get to him. That was far from the case with Ben Simmons. That there were games where you would straight up see Ben Simmons spiraling from a mental standpoint of he would miss a shot, it would get to him, that he would be afraid to try another one. And he wanted this success so badly that he was afraid to fail And it ultimately was a big reason why he's heading down the path basically to who knows where. That he is still on a major contract, the long-term max deal that the Sixers initially inked him to. And I'm very curious what the market for Ben Simmons will be moving forward. That the Nets are currently stuck with him. 
He has not played very many games at all. And to pull up his stats specifically again here, that during his time with the Nets, he played 42 games last year, has played just six games this season. That is just not enough. And especially based on the expectations when he first came there of being that connecting piece between the the Kevin Durant, the Kyrie Irving, being like a big part of that that superstar studded team, he just is unable to fit those shoes anymore. So what is the future for Ben Simmons? For starters, I do think it is all up here. I do think it takes a hard look in the mirror. And that's not the easiest thing to fix by any means. But I do think it takes Ben Simmons acknowledging that my fear of failing is holding me back as a basketball player. If that ever happens, we can have a different conversation about what his future may be. But at this point in time, I think it's more likely he's out of the league in the next five years than it is that he's back in an all-star game. And that's super unfortunate for the level of talent that he really is. That a guy with some of the most natural talent I've ever seen in a basketball player, a guy with, when he came in the NBA, some of the most insane potential of anyone we've ever seen. That there's a different storyline or timeline or world that we're living in where we are talking about Ben Simmons in the LeBron James, Magic Johnson type of conversation for the abilities that he has. But unfortunately, that's not this one. And it did not work for the Sixers, did not work for Ben Simmons, and did not work for Joel Embiid. And I do think that Joel Embiid is correct in this statement, talking about the aggressiveness, talking about the free throw shooting. And it is unfortunate we will never be able to find out if that is truly the case. I do think we are far enough past the Ben Simmons saga that I don't view him in such negative light at this point, that it is what it is. There were good moments, even though they were covered up. It is no surprise that it did not work out in the long term, that I think we hung on to the Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid thing working by a thread. And without the, without the Sixers moving on, we would not see this growth from Tyrese Maxey. We would not have seen the, the chance with James Harden. We would not have seen these new picks that we've had and these other players and the future that is much brighter than it was at one point. So for now, the Sixers got to keep chugging on, keep focusing on improving and, and winning in this season. But it is disappointing looking back and thinking how the Ben Simmons story really has gone. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments, your feelings toward Ben now, now that we are a little bit removed from the whole hatred conversation, hold out all of these things. I, like I said, I do feel a little more positively and can remember the good times in a way that I once ignored regarding Ben Simmons. But regardless, I'm happy with how the team is now and much more confident in their chances of winning based on how they're currently constructed. Regardless, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and drop a comment to let me know your thoughts. We'll be talking next time right here on Sixers Digest. Peace.